The best part about studying one team for an entire season is watching how teams are going to attack the scheme week in and week out. Think about it, a chess match is unfolding in front of your eyes on every play. We see that here in week 14 against the Jets. The Jets send out an extra lineman and align him and running back Trenton Cannon in the backfield. This personnel grouping keeps the Bills defense in base with three linebackers on the field. New York then settles into a twin set so the Bills match it with a corners over look. Corners over just means that both corners traveled with the receivers to the same side and the look typically means the defense is in man coverage, which wouldn't be all that out of the ordinary in the red zone. Man coverage is exactly what quarterback Sam Darnold wants to see. If it is man coverage, linebacker Lorenzo Alexander would have to work through traffic to pick up the running back cannon. But the coverage was disguised well because when the ball is snapped, the Bills drop into quarters coverage and Alexander and corner Tredavious White execute a banjo coverage to help keep the primary receiver from possibly being open. So let's take a look at how we got to this point and break down what a banjo coverage is. A banjo technique or coverage is a call that typically is used to defend rub concepts when in man coverage. Think of it as a switch between two defenders to prevent rub plays or to minimize the leverage an offense may have gotten based on a formation or alignment. Buffalo uses banjo techniques a bunch, like this cover one call where you hear Milano scream push as a running back, his assignment, releases wide. That push call means that Milano is pushing the running back wide to Micah Hyde and that Milano will now take Hyde's receiver. Listen into the call. Once again, he is flirting with history. Luck on third and five, thrown on the run. He won. Just Flash forward to week 13 and the Bills are presented with the same exact offensive mesh call, but from under center. Buffalo plays man coverage, and as a running back Kenyon Drake motions wide, you see Milano push the coverage to safety Jordan Boyer. So the primary receiver, the running back, is shut down by the push call, and quarterback Ryan Tannehill is forced to hit the mesh route underneath. But this time, linebacker Tremaine Edmonds and Poyer are there to help bring down the receiver before he reaches the end zone. Understanding how teams want to attack the scheme, and having solutions to overcome possible coverage weaknesses at the linebacker and secondary level, is a sign of a well-coached defense. You can even see Milano give Poyer some dap for playing the concept perfectly. Every defender is coached up on this technique because on any given play, they could be executing it. The Bills send Milano on a blitz here, so Edmonds and safety Raphael Bush need to process the releases quickly. Edmonds pushes the running back to Bush, and it gives both defenders much better leverage on the routes. Bush misses the tackle, but it holds up the running back enough to still minimize the gain. Okay, so let's start to work back to the play at hand. Two plays prior to the primary play of this breakdown, the Bills also used a banjo type coverage, but it appears to come when they played their quarters coverage. The Jets send out 12 personnel and align them in a 2x2 two two set with the running back into the boundary. The Bills utilize the same corners overlook as earlier to try and confuse Darnold, but then the Jets motion the tight end out wide, so the Bills activate what appears to be quarters coverage. So Levi Wallace drops back and ends up being a safety on this play. On the snap, Edmonds is tested. He pushes the back to Milano, but the tight end Chris Hernan is driving vertically and running a corner route so the rookie is tasked with carrying him. The coverage is good, but Darnold drops a dime to Herndon for a 14 yard gain. Look at all the communication and adjustments that are taking place prior to the snap. Did the play work? Sure, but the throw had to be special in order to beat Edmonds, and unfortunately for the rookie, this throw was. Otherwise, this is very good coverage. So now back to the play at hand. The Jets have the Bills in their base defense, with a man-beater concept drawn up against what looks like man coverage. So Darnold is licking his chops because the offense has Cannon on a rail or wheel route up the sideline versus Lorenzo Alexander. But on the snap, Alexander pushes the back to Trey White to take away the primary target. So now Zoe must push out to the number one wide receiver, with Edmonds eliminating the number two receiver. Since the Bills play a vision-based system that relies on a player's vision and instincts, Zoe holds half a click too long thinking Darnold was going to throw it to Anderson. So the receiver that Zoe was supposed to push to pivots to the sideline and uncovers. Fortunately for the Bills, Levi Wallace's eyes are on the QB the entire time and he can see the play unfolding and he is able to minimize the gain. These rallies and chess matches occur on just about every play. Teams study how their opponent is going to respond to the field zone, personnel groupings, formations and alignments. So a coordinator must have techniques like banjo coverages to combat all sorts of concepts and plays so that his players can solve problems on the fly. If not, coordinators will test the scheme and players in it to see if they know how to defend a play or if they have learned from past experiences. Banjo coverages can force quarterbacks to move on past their primary read, move on in their progression, hold on to the ball longer, or make them have to throw a perfect ball to beat the coverage. This game is fascinating to study, don't you think?